She texted me. She texted me last night, and I was like, I'll try to remember to to record the notes, but I'm not probably. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is um, kind of what we said yesterday, right? That the area under a curve is just that definite integral. So it says that you have a function is non-negative and integrable over a closed interval. Then the area under the curve from A to B is the integral. From A to B, that's really small, right? Can you read that? All right, the screen. The area equals the integral from A to B of f of x dx. So just like when we did derivatives, we wanted to recognize when it said find the instantaneous rate of change, find the instantaneous velocity, find the slope of the tangent line, find the slope of the curve, right? All of those meant do the derivative. Um, all of those were things that you could find with the derivative. When you see area under a curve or you see an integral, you need to think area under a curve. All right. Um, that's kind of what that sentence says, right? So if uh, they ask us to find an integral, we could do the area. If they ask us to find the area, we could do an integral. But right now, we don't know how to do this, right? Like, look at that. If I said, hey, integrate that, you're like, you haven't taught me, right? Because we're still practicing on the area right now. So today, we don't know how to do this yet. Eventually, I'm going to show you how to do this without a calculator by hand. Um, but today, we just want to say, oh, hey, that's the area under that curve from negative 2 to 2. So let's draw the picture and see if we can find the area under that curve. Do you know what shape that is, the square root of 4 minus x squared? What shape is that? The square root of 4 minus x squared? Do you know? It's okay. We can make a graph. You think about it. All right, hold on. This happens as well. So, like, I was trying to watch the video last night to put questions on it for them, and I can't even do it. Like, I'm not even going to post the video because my voice is, like, 10 seconds ahead of my writing, which is really hard to watch. <laughs> so, how's that? Um, do you got this yet while I was rambling on? What do I get when I plug negative 2 in there? Zero, because 4 minus 4. What do I get when I plug positive 2 in there? What do I get when I plug zero in there? Square root of four. <laughs> um, and if I plug one in there, I'm going to get the square root of three, um, which is like 1.7 something ish. I'm not even going to graph that one. Some people like to connect that and make it a triangle and connect it with straight lines, but it's not straight lines. What's that look like? Half of a circle! <laughs> so remember that the equation of a circle centered at the, the, what's that called, the origin, is just x squared plus y squared equals r squared? But we like functions, right? So if we graph the whole circle, that's not going to pass the vertical line test. So every time if you solve um, a circle equation for y, you're going to get plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. So not that you have to memorize that, but it's just nice if you recognize it, I think. Because when I see that, I'm like, oh, that's a circle with a radius of 2. And I don't have to make an x, y chart to do that. And I don't ever draw a triangle for that. Um, and notice this one's just the positive, so it's a semi-circle on the top here. If it was a negative, it would be the bottom half. So it's important that it's a geometric shape right now because we don't want to do rectangles because that's not going to be accurate. So this is half of a circle. We should be able to find the area of that, which means we can find the exact value of this integral by just finding the area of this semicircle. And what would be the formula for the area of a semicircle? Do you say semicircle or semicircle? I say semi, but videos say semi and it annoys me. Timu Mizumi says semicircle. 
Do you know what Tina Marie Healy has? It's a good show. <laughs> the, and they sing a song about they have mighty math powers, and my kid loves it, and he sings it all the time. And I'm like, do you know mommy is a math teacher? He doesn't care. <laughs> I remember when the library, when they put on Netflix, it's always like on Sunday. And then the librarians are like sneaky smiling. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can tell you kids watching it. Like, well, it's just the librarians. <laughs> Kyler, how am I going to find the area of this? How do you find area of a circle? Okay, but I don't want the whole circle. I just want half of it. Look at you. Don't say, uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the exact value of this integral is equal to pi times the radius, which is 2 squared over 2. So without really doing any calculus, right? You said it was a calculus. I'm really not even doing calculus. We're just doing area. And that would be 2 pi. Well, it's not really, we're not solving it, we're evaluating it. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> that used to me. No, evaluate means like plug in the value. Like if I said evaluate 2x squared minus 7x when x equals 2, that's evaluating it. But if I said solve 2x squared minus 7x equals 0, that's solve. That's evaluate. <laughs> okay, so big idea today is make a graph, figure out some geometry, use some area formulas, because integral equals area. Ooh, what does absolute value graph look like? I don't know why I made my graph so big. Because I'm just going from negative 1 to 1. No need to make a lot more lines than that. What do I get when I plug 0 in there? What's the shape of absolute value graph? A V-shaped graph, right? Oh. Oh. If you think about your um, transformation rules, what does a negative in front of a graph mean? It should be flipped down. So normally it's a V starting at 0 and it points up, but that negative means it's flipped over. And what's a 1 added on the outside mean it's doing? It's moved up one and it's flipped over. So again, all those transformation rules, you can think about those. Or you could just kind of pick some points here. If you plug in negative one here, you get one minus one, which is zero. You plug in positive one, you also get zero. You might say, hey, this could be a semicircle too, right? But that's why you have to know. You have to know the square root of four minus x squared is a semicircle. You have to know this are, This is an absolute value, which is straight lines, which means this is going to be a triangle, right? So. It's important to recognize those um, functions for all your pre-calculus life has to come back to you. I don't know why I can't draw that better, but thanks. So Sabrina, how do I find the area of a triangle? So we have to make sure we count correctly. Right? We've been struggling with this a bit. <laughs> well, everybody the first day. There were lots of them. And then you still yesterday. Um, so the, the length here is two units, right? From negative one to one is two. Yes? Yeah. And the height is one. So the integral equal to the area under that curve, which is just one. more. So what about this one? This one has a negative in front of it. 
Um, if your function is less than zero, which means if your function is below the x-axis, then you can get a negative value for your integral. Um, I'm going to show you a picture here in a minute from the book. I just always think about like if I'm doing area, um, if it's a negative value, like if I have a triangle and the height is a negative number, then I put that negative number in there. So I don't ever like memorize of, oh, if it's below, it's going to be negative. I just use the actual y values. Um, and so it says the value of any integral is the area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis, which means that's where you get that sometimes an integral has a value of zero. That's really off. What function does that look like? It's a tree function. It is either side or cosine. I can't remember which line. I think it's sine. Which, which function has a value of 0 at 0? So this starts at 0, right? So this is a really bad sine function. But if I just graph one period of sine, it is 1 up, 1 down. Every time, are these two going to be, I know mine look like that, but do you agree that these two are symmetric, like they're the exact same value? Which means I don't even have to know what this is. If I know it's sine and I know it's one period, this area would be a positive amount, whatever that happens to be. This is the same area, but it's a negative amount. So the value of that integral is zero because they canceled each other out. Oh, look, I didn't, I didn't put these pictures. Why didn't I just put them on there for you? I'm going to make you draw them. <laughs> <laughs> so the book gives you this uh, formula, and I never use this in my life, but I'm going to show it to you because sometimes people use it. Um, so it says, if you have a constant function, but every time you can find the area. So let's think about a minute before I show you the formula, before I show you the pictures. Um, if I have a constant function, let's just say C is right here. I bet that's one of the pictures down here. What does a constant function look like when I graph it? The line going which way? Like this line? Like this line? Like this line? Horizontal. So it would be like from A to B, it would look like this, right? And if it's the area under the curve from A to B, what kind of shape is that always going to be? Or rectangle, right? Because it might not be, like mine looks like a square, but... A and B could be close together, far apart. Um, so you can always just do the length times the width. Every time, would this length always just be B minus A, like whatever that interval is? Like if this was 1 and 3, that would be a length of 2, because 3 minus 1 is 2. If this was 4 and this was 10, that would be a length of 6, because 10 minus 4 is 6. So the length of that rectangle is always just going to be B minus A, and the height of that rectangle is always going to be what? Whatever C happens to be, even if C is negative, all right? So they give you this formula. And again, I always think it's silly because I'm like, why wouldn't we just draw a picture and do a rectangle? But they say every time the value of that integral from A to B of C D of X is just equal to C, because that's your height, times B minus A, which is your width. And then they show you pictures, and these are in your book. But they kind of draw a way better picture than what I did. But it's pretty much the same thing. You have your constant function. Every time this is b minus a, your height is c. And then they just point out that it could be a negative area. And again, for me, when I do this, I just always, whatever c is, if c is a negative number, then that's what I plug in there. And I just kind of disregard that whole thing about area can be negative. Because on a coordinate plane, when we're talking about area under curve, it can be negative if it's below the x-axis. Which is where I think my whole can you have a negative complement, I think it just depends on what you're talking about. Every definition I looked up last night, because I looked it up quite a bit, every definition of a complementary angle just said two angles that add up to 90 degrees. It did not say they have to be acute angles. It did not say it has to be positive angles. So I think, depending on what you're working on, if you want negative angles to add to 90 degrees, you can. Um, but 
the ge geometry definition, I think, is this one. But. So, now I could ask you to do this. Evaluate the integral from 3 to 7 of the function negative 20. There you go. Did you want to draw those pictures? I'm going to go back so you can draw them. Great talk. <laughs> you know this is why I'm so good at making videos, because no one talks to me anyway. When I'm talking to a room full of people, I get the same response as when I'm teaching to myself, and I ask questions. Thing. You tend to think about my questions. <laughs> Sorry. I'll just drink some ice cold water. My father-in-law had a tumor cut out of his intestine yesterday, and I have some cool pictures if you want to see them later. I took a picture of the pictures they printed out to show Mrs. Hodge because I knew she would think it was really cool. They just did it all with a scope. Isn't that crazy? Like, the, the tumor was inside his intestine. They just went down the scope, and they put this metal clip around it to, like, squeeze it because they were afraid of, like, putting a hole in his intestine, which is bad news. So the clip like guarded them from doing it. And then the doctor, his words is that they just sliced off layers of the tumor, like slicing the birthday cake. <laughs> but then when they got to the bottom of the tumor, it was really hard, like as hard as cutting wood, he said. Uh, and they couldn't cut it off. So they just left it with the little metal thing. And over the next seven to 10 days, the metal clip is gonna squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and it's just gonna pop off the tumor. Isn't that crazy? Like, really, like, painful when he actually feels it? Like, I don't know. And, and then he just... Like, and <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> no, because... <laughs> I don't know. But the metal clip... The metal clip is, like, cutting off the blood supply. So it's going to just... Basically, it's just going to fall off. It's not going to pop off. It's that they've cut off the blood supply to it, so it's going to die. And then it's just going to fall off. Kind of like, ooh, like the baby's in vocal cord, where they just cut off the blood supply, and then it just dries up and falls off. Unless your sister pulls it off first and then your belly button moves. That may or may not happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> also, my fingers, right? I told you that story, right? Like, I had 12 fingers when I was born. You know that, right? I heard that. And look, I have a scar right here. Because there wasn't any bone in it. It was just like this mutation, because I'm an alias. And, um,. <laughs> And there wasn't any bone in it, so they just like wrap it up like they do with your belly button. And they're like, and well, then she won't have to have surgery, and it'll just fall off. But my sister yanked them off, and then it bled everywhere. And then I have a scar that people are like, oh, do you have a wart? And I should say, yes, I have a wart. But instead, I'm like, no, I have 12 fingers, which causes a whole big deal conversation. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not a wart, it's a finger scar. Oh, your sister, like two. Like she was twenty-two months when I was born. Did something happened at the same time. I mean, yeah, I was a newborn. It all happened very quickly. Oh. Where is my mother, right? Because oh, she ripped her finger off. Yeah, like she was like not even two. And so my mom was changing my diaper, and and my sister was like, "Oh, baby!" And my mom thought she was being nice to me, and then she ripped my finger off, and then it bleeds everywhere, and I'm crying. And then my mom doesn't learn, and then like a week later she ripped this one off. But this one is like almost no scar because it was a little more healed. But if my sister wasn't so mean and ripped my fingers off, there would be no evidence. Like no one would have, it would be no proof that I was born with 12 fingers. But. Why would she? She was two. She didn't know. Like she's a baby. Well, why would you do that? I ripped someone's finger off. Like I couldn't rip someone's finger off. No, it was like dead and dried up grossness. Have you ever seen a baby that's <laughs> overboard? Like have you ever seen that? It's gross. It gets all black and, and it just falls off. <laughs> that was my fingers. I guess. There's no pictures of them. My mom wasn't like, let me take a picture of my freaky baby. With <laughs> <laughs> There's no evidence of this. <laughs> and it's genetic. And I was so paranoid that my children were going to have 12 fingers. So, like, and if they did, then no one would have sold their hands until those fingers were gone. <laughs> but they didn't. But, like, there's just this, like, what if my grandkids have 12 fingers? Uh, like, I'm never going to need removed. So someday I'm like, it's okay. I have 12 fingers too.
Oh, children. I haven't got to tell this 12 years really long. The best part was at my wedding, my sister was my uh, maid of honor, and in her toast, in front of my husband's whole family that was unaware that I was a freak with 12 fingers, she apologizes for pulling my fingers off. She's like, I just want to say, I'm sorry that I pulled your fingers off. And I'm like, what are you doing? We don't, I don't want to advertise this. Luckily, most pulling was semantic. I can't wait for Christy to hear all this. <laughs> so you could just use the formula or you could just do the area, right? So from seven minus three, so the formula would say seven minus three times negative 20. Or you could just say seven minus three is four times negative 20 is negative 80. And yes, negative answers are okay because it's all below the x-axis. Or if there's more below than above, it's gonna be negative. For now. I mean, we're going to get into story problems and all that fun stuff, but yes, like it's just a graph, so we don't know what it's measured in. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we can also do this on our graphing calculator. Do you have your graphing calculator? I'm so excited because my calculator looks like your calculator. Back in the day, like last year, um, the old calculators, the button was um, annoying and it doesn't look nice. Like it doesn't look like an integral, but now because we have fancy calculators, when you hit this button, it just gives you the integral sign with your uh, A to B, and you type in the function and you type in the event. So it looks exactly like you write it on paper. Um, and it's in the same spot um, for the derivative one. Do you remember how we did derivatives on the calculator? Math. Under math. Number eight, we did numerical derivatives. So if we want to take the derivative at a point, we could do number eight. Number nine is an integral. So uh, function integral kind of looks like s and int, but maybe you shouldn't say that. I mean, it's not appropriate, but. But look, it just gives you an integral sign from a to b. That's where you type in your function, and that's your d of x or whatever variable is in your problem. Um, and so no more do you have to memorize where do I put stuff because it looks exactly like this. So um, it says evaluate numerically. Um, and so this, I don't know if you read that or not, but that's your integral from negative 1 to 2 of x sine of x dx. So from negative 1, and you can use your arrows to go to all of them. And then x sine of x and then dx did you get that so maybe we need to make sure I think this is okay but it's um, sometimes if you're in degree mode things get weird uh, when you're doing trig functions you will never, ever, 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 ever use the remote in calculus, so you should always be in radian mode. Um, did you not get that, Alice? Oh, I'm in degree mode because of stupid physics. Oh, yeah, so because of stupid physics, you have to work really hard before a test, and remember to never take a test in here in degree mode, or you're going to be very sad. Jake Berg took a test in degree mode once because he was taking my college algebra analytic geometry at the same time as calculus, and he was in degree mode for that class, and then he took a test in degree mode, and was very sad. Um, you can also do this on a graph, so let's go to the graph and, and type that in our graph, x sine of x. I don't know what my window is right now, but I'm just going to graph it. Whoa, that's a cool graph. It's important if you're going to use it on the graph. I don't ever use it on the graph, but uh, I just like to show you that it is here if you want to look at it. Um, you have to have the window, like your A to B has to be showing. So negative 1 to 2 has to be in the window or it's not going to work. And it's where we do everything else on the graph part under calc. So if I hit second trace to get to calc, to number 7 right there, it says the integral of f of x. Uh, and it asks you down here, like, what is your lower limit? 
Um, so my lower limit was negative one. Enter, what is my upper limit? Is two, enter, and look what it does. It shades in under the graph for that interval because um, that's what an integral is. It's the area under that curve, which we could approximate with RAM, but um, we don't have a geometry formula for that shape. And so that's where um, eventually we'll learn how to do this by hand. But right now we just have geometry and we have calculators. And notice they gave us the same answer there. Questions on that? That's what all my calculators do again. And again, um, on our test, we will have a calculator part and a no calculator part to mimic the AP exam that has a calculator part and a no calculator part. So definitely knowing how to do both derivatives and integrals on our calculators um, is important. Oh, look, we did that already. Oh, I said all that already. Um, so there you go. So this is your homework. Um, I don't even know what chapter we're on anymore. This is six, right? Four, five, five. Five dash two day two. In pre cal we're on chapter four, and in algebra two, we're on chapter six. That's so interrupted. Um, so unless it says to use your calculator, you should probably use, be using geometry on most of this stuff. I gave you lots of odd ones because I want you checking your answers so that you can ask me for help. This is like our, our first big assignment, right, from the semester. We've been having, like, baby assignments. Um, Yeah, 7 through 27, all of those should be done um, like by hand with the graph. And then 33 through 36 say, your this is an old book, but your, your book says use N-I-N-T, NINT. That means numerical integration. The old calculators used to say that. Ours say F-N-I-N-T. Um, but that just means use your calculator. All right, so 33 through 36, use your calculator. But 7 through 27... Probably, um, for the most of those, you're going to be making graphs. For some of the constant ones, you won't have to do that. And we'll talk about some of those tomorrow, so please um, work on this. And I uh, haven't put online homework on for this, but I will. If you order those on there, maybe you can find a, an example to help you as you're doing these. And you have